Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In the last video, we have discussed about concept of covariant return type. In this video, we will learn about dynamic method dispatch that is DMD. And to understand about DMD, you should know the basic knowledge about inheritance and method overriding. And I have made a separate video on inheritance and method overriding. If you haven't watched that videos, then you can watch that video on a link that I have mentioned in the description of this video. Okay. And these are the points that we are going to discuss. First, I will explain what is dynamic method dispatch practically. Then I will explain advantage of dynamic method dispatch. And at the end, we are going to see the real life example of dynamic method dispatch. Okay. So, as we know that in Java, when we run any program, then first it get compiled by the help of compiler, right? And then it get executed by the help of JVM. And during the execution of program, some task resolve at compile time and some task resolve at runtime. Such as when we call any method in a program, then which method has to be executed is first handled by compiler at compile time and invoke or execute the method as per given method call and if compiler couldn't handle it at compile time then jvm handle that method call at a run time that means if compiler couldn't understand which method has to be executed for a given method call then jvm resolve that method call at a run time and if JVM determine or resolve which method has to be executed at runtime, then it's called as runtime polymorphism. And runtime polymorphism is resolved through dynamic method dispatch. That means dynamic method dispatch is used to perform runtime polymorphism. Okay. Now question comes that what is dynamic method dispatch and how it is used to resolve runtime polymorphism? right so what is runtime polymorphism i have already explained in polymorphism tutorial in detail okay so let's understand dynamic method dispatch practically okay first let's create phone class okay so here class phone and there is one method in phone class and it's void screen size okay just put message here screen size okay and let's create one more class and it's uh, suppose iPhone one class okay iPhone one also has screen size because every phone has screen size right and hence I want to get screen size method that are present in phone class into iPhone one class and to get that phone class method into iPhone class, first we need to create inheritance relationship with phone class. Okay. And we can do it using extends keyword. So just write here extends phone. Okay. And now both the phone class and iPhone class are in inheritance relationship. So here phone class will be parent class and iPhone one class will be child class and now we can easily get the methods of parent class into its child class okay so just copy and paste here okay we know that every smartphone has different screen size similarly iphone one also has different screen size and hence i need to slightly modify this method so here i can write iphone one as 4.5 inch screen size so here i have modify or redefine parent class method in its child class as per child class requirement and it's nothing but the method overriding so basically i have override parent class method in its child class right now let's create one more child class and it's iphone 2 class okay And same here also I want to override phone class method in iPhone 2 class. Okay. So here I can write copy and paste here. But the iPhone 2 has 5 inch screen size. Okay. Let's create one more child class and it's suppose iPhone 3 class. Okay. 
and here iPhone 3 has 5.5 inch screen size okay so these are the overriding methods that we have override from parent class right generally if we have to call the parent class method then first we need to create parent class object and using that object we can call parent class method that is suppose I want to call this phone class method then first I will need to create a phone class object and using that object I can call this phone class method similarly if I want to call iPhone 1 class method then first I will need to create iPhone 1 class object and using that object I can call this iPhone 1 class method right but if we notice here the multiple child classes that is iPhone 1 class iPhone 2 class and iPhone 3 class extends only one parent class that is phone class and it's nothing but the hierarchical inheritance if we are dealing with hierarchical inheritance in program then we can use another technique to call methods that is if i write okay equals to new So here parent class reference variable phone obj is pointing to the child class object right and when parent class reference variable pointing to child class object then this technique is called as upcasting. So basically in Java upcasting is used to deal with hierarchical inheritance and using upcasting we can perform dynamic method dispatch. Now let's call the methods okay dot screen size. So here reference is of parent type and object is of child type, right? So when such type of situation creates, then which method get execute? Parent class method or child class method? So in this situation, child class method get execute because here child class object is going to be create. Okay. And this screen size method is overriding method, right? An execution of overriding method is based on object type. That means which overriding method has to be executed is based on object type. That is based on the object that going to be created. And here object type is of child class, right? That is child class object is going to be created. So always keep in mind overriding method that has to be executed is always based on object type not on a reference type and here we have used new keyword right and new keyword is used for object creation and object creation is always takes place at runtime by jvm right and hence which overriding method has to be executed or dispatched is a result at a runtime and this mechanism is called as dynamic method dispatch because here dynamic means runtime dispatch means execute so which overriding method has to be dispatched is decided dynamically that is at runtime and hence it's called as dynamic method dispatch so basically dynamic method dispatch is a mechanism in which which overriding method has to be executed is decided at runtime rather than compile time. And method that has to be invoke or execute at runtime by JVM, then it's called as runtime polymorphism. And hence, it is said that dynamic method dispatch is used to resolve runtime polymorphism. And this is the first advantage of dynamic method dispatch. Same here we can do for iPhone 2 class. Okay, so here the parent class reference. Uh, is phone obj is now pointing to the iPhone 2 class object okay let's call phone obj dot screen size now question comes that which method get execute phone class method or iPhone 2 class method so here no doubt iPhone 2 class method get execute because here iPhone 2 class object is going to create okay similarly we can call iPhone 3 class method okay phone obj now pointing to the iPhone 3 class object okay 
But your iPhone 3 class screen size method will execute because here the runtime object is of iPhone 3. Okay. Now let's run the code and let's see. Now see here we got an expected output. So basically which overriding method has to be executed is always based on object that is going to be created at a runtime. And object creation always takes place at a runtime. That means which overriding method has to be executed or dispatch is decided or determined at a runtime. And hence this mechanism is called as dynamic method dispatch. Now let's discuss about advantage of dynamic method dispatch. So first advantage is dynamic method dispatch is used to perform runtime polymorphism. That already we have discussed. And second advantage is it allow child classes to define their own implementation. That means now see here this parent class method we have override in all child classes, right? That is screen size of all phones are going to vary. And it's not necessary to have same screen size to all smartphones, right? That's why we need to override this parent class method in all child classes as per child class requirement. That means child classes can define their own implementation or logic using parent class method. So basically, dynamic method dispatch allow child classes to define their own implementation. And this is the second advantage of dynamic method dispatch. And third advantage is dynamic method dispatch allow a class to define methods that will be shared for all its child classes. That means, now see here, if I create one more method in parent class and it's suppose a battery method, okay. And uh, let's print here, I have a single battery. Okay, and we know that every smartphone has single battery. That's why we do not need to override this battery method in all child classes. Okay, and hence this battery method will be common for all child classes. And this common method will be shared for all its child classes. So basically, dynamic method dispatch allow a class to define methods that will be shared for all its child classes and this is the third advantage of dynamic method dispatch so here battery method is non overriding method okay because we didn't override this method in all child classes right and non overriding method we can call using reference type because non overriding method is based on reference type so let's call battery method okay so here here we can write an obj dot battery so this screen size method is overriding method and overriding method is always based on object type that is the object that is going to be created at a runtime and this battery method is non overriding method and non overriding method is always based on a reference type okay so this battery method is for iPhone 1 object. Similarly, we can write for iPhone 2 object. Okay. So this battery method is for iPhone 2 object. Similarly, we can write for iPhone 3 object. So this battery method is for iPhone 3 object. Now let's run the code and let's see. Okay. Now see here, iPhone 1 has 4.5 inch screen size, I have a single battery, okay. iPhone 2 has 5 inch screen size and I have single battery. And iPhone 3 has 5.5 inch screen size and I have single battery. In this way, we can use a single parent class reference to hold the child class object. And this mechanism is called as dynamic method dispatch. But the reverse of it not possible okay that means if i create iphone 1 and ip1 to hold the parent class object okay in this case compiler will raise an error because see here 
we can say iPhone 1 is a phone, iPhone 2 is a phone, iPhone 3 is a phone. But we cannot say all phones are iPhone 1 or all phones are iPhone 2 because phone might be of Samsung, might be of Motorola or might be of Nokia. So basically, we cannot use child class reference to hold parent class object. Clear? Now we are going to see as a real life point of view. Okay. So assume that if you have to repair your TV, then you will take it to the technician to repair your TV. Right? Similarly, another customer has to repair his refrigerator. Then same technician will repair his refrigerator also. And there is one more customer who has to repair his washing machine. Then same technician will repair his washing machine also. So basically, here, same technician is providing service for TV, for refrigerator, as well as for washing machine, as per customer requirement, right? Similarly, here, single parent class reference phone object is providing service for all child class objects. That is, providing service for iPhone 1 object iPhone 2 object and iPhone 3 object as per requirement, right? This way we can explain dynamic method dispatch in a real life scenario. So this is the basic of dynamic method dispatch. I hope you understand the concept of dynamic method dispatch. And for more help, you can refer my notes that I have mentioned in the description of this video. Now I am going to end this session. So keep learning, keep growing and thank you so much for watching.